flag in the air. And he's going to house it. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. What's going on, everybody? And welcome to your NASCAR home, the Angle of Pursuit podcast. I am your host, Kyle Robert. You follow me on Twitter at NotoriousKRO. With me to break down Martinsville, DraftKings, and our update our betting cards is Brian Twining. What's up, Brian? Hey, Kyle. I'm freaking stoked for this race. Uh, like, it, there are so many storylines coming into here. Qualifying was extremely interesting. And I, I asked this question to you prior to recording, but where the F was this Kyle Larson all season? Um, you know, you could spin it however you want. You could say maybe he just finally figured out the new car and he's starting to get comfortable. Um, but ever since our, our guy Bubba Wall has slammed him into the wall, um, he he's won and now he's on the pole at Martinsville. So, you know, may, maybe it he just needed a jolt. Maybe he was driving a little timid and now he's like, fuck it, I don't care anymore. And he's just <laughs> balls to the wall. But uh, I like it. I like that theory a lot because he's really not driving for anything other than the owner's championship because yep. there's not a lot of pressure on him right now to win the race or move on or whatever. And for a lot of people, that frees them up. Yep. Yep. Pressure was, you know, he he had such an amazing season last year and was really worried about, yeah. you know, trying to re, re repeat it. And maybe, you know, now that he that's not really a worry anymore, he's like, you know what, let's just drive. And <clears throat> He really is, like, in terms of pure driving ability, one of the best to ever do oh, it. for sure. Um, there's, you know, there's been, you know, talks that maybe he could make sense as, like, an American guy to go try out F1. But, you know, he's so comfortable in NASCAR and obviously loves to do his dirt track and other stuff. I don't know if F1 would uh, accept him after that that stunt he pulled over at the last uh, road course week where he absolutely sent it into the corner and, like, almost took out Ty Dillon. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, I, don't know. I don't know that was an interesting it'd be it'd be pretty there. interesting to see him get a shot but um yeah yeah he is uh he is he is on fire um so let's look at the DraftKings pricing uh let's build a lineup uh hopefully i'll get to enter it if DraftKings is ever so accommodating um please mr draft king uh let me let me enter a lineup um, pretty 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 wild that they're uh, still not letting me enter lineups despite trying to update one contest while we were in Las Vegas. But and you know. your geolocator, it's clearly showing you. They, uh, yeah, yeah, the they're state. still like, well, we don't know. We think you're trying to enter from two different places, and you're trying to use this. And I'm like, I enter, I logged on like one time. I'm sorry that your app sucks and it kept spinning. But anyway, so let's look. At, let's build a lineup. Uh, let's see what we can get done, and and let's do it. Uh, all right, let me make that a little bigger. So as uh, as we discussed, Kyle Larson is on the pole. He is uh, your most expensive driver at eleven seven. Um, could easily run away and hide early in the race, dominate from the jump, and definitely be the guy that you need. Behind him, we have your guy Denny Hamlin, the number eleven, starting eleventh at eleven k. Um, that's kind of interesting. Uh, <laughs> Chase Elliott rounds out the 11K. So we have three guys uh, north of 11K. Elliott starting second, Larson starting first, Hamlin starting 11th. Are you start? Are you interest, interested in using any of these guys this week? I mean, that is a lot of salary. On honestly, normally I would go to Hamlin starting 11th, but I still feel very strongly about Chase Elliott and him being the cheapest of those three. And knowing that he's still in the championship battle, he's only third in the standings right now, yeah. so he's going to need a good run here. I think I, I would go with him, expecting him to run kind of at this point pretty much the entire race, considering yeah. he's been so good here lately. Yeah, yeah, I think he makes a lot of sense, and, and to your point, will be the cheapest option. So I think a lot of people could end up finding themselves there. I wouldn't blame anyone who goes with Larson. Um, it's definitely been a rough season, but he looks so good in practice and qualifying. Um, he could absolutely dominate and be the guy you need. The 10K range um, is interesting. We have three more options. Byron starting 25th at 10.8. Your guy Ryan Blaney starting 4th at 10.4. And Joey Logano starting 12th at 10K. Uh, you know, there there's a lot of things you could do this week, including just 
crossing off the 11 and 10 K range and trying to make it work. You could kind of take two of these guys and build a lineup. I guess if you're, you know, if you had to lean one way or the other, what's your thought? Would you rather just cross them all off and try and build a lineup with, you know, sub 10 K guys, or would you, are you trying to get at least one or maybe two of these guys into your lineup? I would probably try to get at least one of these guys and the person you feel most strongly about potentially dominating the race, leading that hundred plus laps during this event. Uh, I mean, it was pretty impressive watching Ryan Blaney put together practice and qualifying where he was one of the fastest cars on track. Although I do find it curious that he, he basically came out and said he does, he, he does not race the same way that he puts down his practice and qualifying laps. So it'll be interesting to see how these cars drive in traffic and dirty air and stuff like that. And with that, I would probably avoid him starting fourth, just knowing all the issues he's had on pit road. Um, <laughs> I mean, you'll see with the betting card though. I I'm going a little bit opposite direction prior to practice qualifying, but still yeah. for me over that, that top group, I would probably lean Elliot as my favorite guy and the most expensive drivers. Yeah. So, uh, thanks to our friends over at ifantasyrace.com. We have the average cheat, average speed cheat sheet. Uh, Ryan Blaney was first in fifth, 10, five, 10, 15 and 20 lap averages he was second in 25 and he was third in 30 so uh for the majority of the of the races where he'll have to be on the track he was the fastest um obviously uh you know if, if we get a long run where there's not a lot of cautions and stuff um you know maybe he he loses it a little little bit but um, hey we yeah. saw that at vegas though too mm -hmm. he was probably the best car on track but all yeah, it took was him. him spinning himself out and then yeah. pit pit crew errors uh, have been the story for him all season. So, yeah. And Byron was actually really fast in five and 10 lap averages and 15, actually. Um, and then, you know, once it got to a longer run, he, he had issues. So I mean, if that's something they could figure out, getting him starting 25th um, at 10, eight could make a lot of sense if you want to kind of grab um, grab him and then maybe a, a potential early dominator, a Blaney uh, or an Elliot. Well, especially considering uh, teammates Larson and, and Elliot are on the front row. Like, you yeah. know that they're probably sharing this data with him, trying to get as many Hendrick cars as possible into the championship four. Yep. Oh, you can lock up that uh, constructor championship as well. Yep. Uh, let's dive into the sub 10K range and see what values we can ha have. I'm just going to run nine through all the way through the eights because there's just there. Yeah. There's definitely like three or four options for each range, pretty much. Uh, Chastain starting inside the top 10 at 9,700. Martin Truex starting 27th at 9,500, I think could be extremely popular and probably worth um, finding a way to get in. Your guy, Christopher Bell, starting 20th, 9,300 also makes a lot of sense. Kyle Busch. 18 as we dive into the 8k range we got kevin harvey starting eighth tyler reddick starting 28th at 8400 um and then we have daniel suarez and chase briscoe rounding out the 8k range of this whole kind of area which names are you finding yourself <laughs> gravitating towards most i i i can't go with the old fogies uh truex and bush of the two i would prefer to go kyle bush um although they've both been kind of racing pretty well coming in here. I would prefer to go Christopher Bell. Like th Throughout this season, he's proven everyone wrong time and time again. This is the first time he hasn't qualified well in quite some time, so it'll be interesting to see the kind of speed he brings on Sunday. But he's been incredible during the playoffs when he's actually stayed on track, and I think knowing that he has to do that this this race in order to advance, like he's probably going to be aggressive to work his way to the front, take, it, take some chances, maybe two tire stops or – Maybe like skip a pit style. Like I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. I'm I'm expecting some chaos Sunday, but I, all in all, I would go Bell of those guys. Maybe this is a good thing for your boy Christopher Bell. Normally he runs really well in practice, dominates qualifying, and then has some issue on yeah, Sunday. Is. Now he's going to reverse it. He's going to do awful in qualifying, but come Sunday, actually put it all together for for three stages. Be the be there at the end and and have a really strong race. We were talking about. His odds to win the NASCAR championship, um, they're pretty spicy. If you feel like Christopher Bell can have a good week, maybe even win this race, uh, could be worth a look. Um, 
Yeah, I, I like well, Bell. I like Truex more than you. I think he makes a lot of sense, especially starting 27th. I don't mind going with the <laughs> olds. Like, I don't mind a, a lineup with Logano and Truex and Kyle Busch. I think it could be an interesting way to go. And, um, you know, you'll you'll have to kind of mix and match, obviously. But I think using a few of those guys could make a ton of sense. Before we pivot off of these guys, I, I just checked the data here over at uh, Racing Reference. So Christopher Bell's uh, last or three of his last four trips to Martinsville, he started in 12th or better, and he's finished 15th or worse in all three of those. But the yeah. one time that he started outside the top 20, it was 23rd. He finished that race seventh, and that was the spring race of last season. Obviously, it's going to be different weather. It's a different scenario here coming into the playoffs, but he's starting near the back of the pack again. Maybe we see him work his way up the field, especially because of the added pressure of trying to get into the championship four, like you said. Yep, I think that makes sense. Let's keep going uh, as we get into the 7K range. We have Bubba Wallace starting 24th, his first race back from the suspension. Almondinger starting 21st. Austin Dillon starting 16th. Brad Keselowski, who, you know, another guy who could be part of the Team Olds lineup that we built. <laughs> Uh, starting six at 7,500. We both liked him. Even, you, you know, when Brian likes him, that's usually a, a <laughs> like it, it takes so much for Brian to come around to Brad Keselowski. Yeah. That usually means it's he, he's definitely worthy of the attention. Uh, and then we have Noah Gragson starting 17th, Austin Sindrick starting 30th, and Eric Almarola starting uh, 15th at an even 7K. Um, Almarola, yeah, gonna be he looks good. Um, and in terms of the, uh, the, the five, 10, 15 lap average, he was seventh, fourth, third, second and 20 lap first and 25 lap second and 30 lap. So as the race went along, he got much, much better. So, you know, if we're looking on Sunday, we get a bunch of hot laps, uh, you know, not a lot of, not a lot of cautions not a lot of, um, you know, issues on the track, he could run through some traffic, be really, really fast. Um, and find his way, you know, up into the top 10 and maybe even, you know, top five neighborhoods. So at an even 7K, he is somebody that that garners my attention. Beyond him, is there someone that uh, jumps out for you? Well, I mean, it's it'd be difficult to go anywhere but him with him only being at 7K starting 15th. He had the 10th mm -hmm. half his single lap practice time. And then, like you said, all of how fast he was as we got into extended durations. Um, I do think that Brad Kozlowski uh, is an interesting case of somebody who, if you did want to skip the 11 and 10 K guys, you could go to him and hope that he somehow maneuvers his way to the front leads 20, 30 laps or so early on in the race. And then he gets a few fastest laps. Like we talked about this earlier in the week. Like the fact that I was on him for a top 10 is definitely saying something that He's, I, I'm expecting him to do well. His top 10 number was barely over even money, and he proved it in practice and qualifying. So he might be somebody that if you want to get sneaky, you add him in your, your lineup. Yeah, and if you want to spend up at the top, he could be your early dominator. You know, you could go with Keselowski, and then you could go back up to the top and grab a Byron. Yeah, Byron. Hamlin. And a Logano or a Byron and a Hamlin or a Logano yep. and, or, you know, a Bell and a, a Byron, a Bell and a Blaney. Like it is interesting that Toyota kind of sucked. Yeah, uh, it was kind of a, a frustrating qualifying though. Like mm. Hamlin had the fastest single practice lap, but it, a lot of people were saying like practice. They were just trying to figure out the car. Yeah, yeah. It it will be interesting to see how the how the practice and how the qualifying um, impacts uh, what we see on Sunday. Um, below seven K, we have Chris Busher starting twenty second. Eric Jones starting twenty third. Uh, Michael McDowell starting 13th. Cole Custer got a top five qualification. Uh, we'll see if he can convert that to a Sunday performance. Oh, no, uh, Ty Gibbs. Out, yeah, <laughs> Ty Gibbs, 26th. Uh, Ricky Stenhouse, who just got married at 5,900. Maybe he gets a little bit of a bump from that. Uh, Justin Haley, Harrison Burton, Ty Dillon, you know, all of the usual bottom feeders. Um, I guess below 7K, what are your thoughts? Who's jumping out to you if you're looking to save salary? Well, he was my best bet in the week earlier in the show, but that's Chris Busher, 6,900 starting 22nd. He's 15th or better in five of the last six trips to Martinsville. I think he still has a good long run in him for this track. Uh, I think he cracks the top 10. That was my best bet. 
earlier in the week and starting 22nd, knowing that his team owner or his car owner, Brad Keselowski qualified sixth. Like I'm expecting them to communicate, you know, wholeheartedly tonight, make some, make some changes to his vehicle and Busher to run perfectly fine. So for for me, it's it's clearly him in this range. Yeah, he makes a ton of sense. And obviously when we want to use him in DraftKings, it's a lot easier to get to him when he's 20 something as opposed exactly. to top 12 or top 11 or whatever. Um, yeah, I know. I, th- I think that makes sense. C- Custer. I mean, if you want to get real spicy and you want to, you know, use him as your dominator, like, I mean, you, you could try that, but that maybe that like seems... the first half of the first stage. And then, yeah, he like, hey. gotta, he feels like a cross off. McDowell feels like a cross off. I mean, Gibbs is fine. Haley's fine. Um, yeah, I don't I don't really love all these guys, but let's let's try and build a lineup and see where the salary and the uh productive and potential points takes us. So uh oh, Brian, lead off this time. Are you want me to lead off? Yeah. Okay. Um interesting. I'm going to put in the old Martin Truex. Ninety five hundred, starting twenty seventh. I think he has top ten, maybe even top five potential. Um, run some fast laps looks really good and, and has a nice race man that's difficult because i uh... all right I'm, I'm gonna go chase elliot we're gonna put ourselves we're gonna handcuff ourselves here let's but do it. let's do it uh chris busher 6900 i think we're both simpatico there um, it's that seamless transition uh to eric almarola for me from yep. from there Yep, I figured if I whichever one I took, you would take the other and <laughs> get to a good spot. All right, so we have almost 8K per driver, so we can do something like Justin Haley or Ricky Stenhouse or maybe a Ty Dillon and then go up, or we can try and get two of like Brad Keselowski, go with a double dominator. Um, well, I think Ty Dillon uh, is an interesting, sneaky play here. I'm, I'm looking at his his finishing results here, and since 2018, his worst finish at Martinsville is actually 24th. I mean, that, to me, that's enough to yeah. put him in there at 50. And it opens up the board, so we can go to Joey Logano, Ross Chastain. We can go with your guy Christopher Bell. We can go with another old and Kyle Busch. We can go Tyler Reddick, who's starting 28th. I know. This isn't necessarily his best track, but he's also been so much better across the board as a driver that I don't mind going there. Do you have a preference between Bell, Bush, Reddick, even Joey Logano? I think those are kind of the four names for me. I mean, personally, I I, I like C. Bell. I think he's okay, gonna he's it. gonna do great. But it is I'm I'm kind of scared putting in two Toyotas, considering they did not look great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we game. could we could definitely build another lineup where we fade Toyota completely. And yeah, but maybe that's maybe that's a smart move. Maybe that's how we get a little bit different. We we kind of yeah, lean on the Toyotas and expect them to do better uh, when it comes to race day. So I will pencil this in. I will call it a lineup, and then hopefully I'll get to enter into some contests tomorrow. Uh, let's recap where we're at with our card before we proceed proceed forward. So I have one outright. It's Martin Truex at ten to one. You can get a better number on that, I believe. We'll we'll recap here in a second. Austin Dillon top ten at plus one fifty. I went Alma Rolla top ten at plus one forty as my best bet. Feeling pretty good about that. Uh, I hit Keselowski for a top five at four to one. Feeling pretty good about that. Almarola top five at five to one. Uh, pretty good about that. Keselowski over Reddick at minus one hundred five. I like where I'm sitting there. Chastain over Elliott at plus one sixty. That was a number pull play. Um, happy to do that. Bell over Blaney, not the greatest, but at plus one fifty five. Hey, it's plus a good gamble. Um, and then obviously the poll bets did not come to fruition. Uh, you are sitting with just Chase Elliott as your outright. Oh, and then I did add, I was telling Kyle prior to practice and qualifying, uh, I added Ryan Blaney at 850. I, I know I said I wasn't going to do it, but there's only two races left. I've been betting them all year. Basically, I'm going to do Don't it. get off the horse now. Yeah. Um, and then you have Kozlowski top 10, Busher top 10. 
Almirola top 10 and uh, Austin Dillon top 10. Plus you have Dinger over Briscoe, Not like Bell over Blady, Busher over Bubba um, currently uh, as we sit now. So let's re- let's look at the odds. Let's see where we're at and let's see if there's anything that's jumping out to us as we look to update the betting card. So Chase Elliott is still your favorite. He is still around where he uh, went off. He's a little bit shorter, but if you liked him at 650, 550 is probably fine. It's all right, Blady. Uh, shortened up six six to one, six and a half to one. I don't think Caesars has updated their odds, so we'll kind of ignore them for now. Uh, Kyle Larson, obviously, his numbers have shrunk significantly after looking awesome um, in qualifying. Not sure I'd go there. I think I'd, you know, I think I'd rather go up to Elliott, but you know, he's been dominant ever since uh, Vegas, so you never know. Hmm. Um, your guy William Byron, eight to one, seven and a half. That uh, is a very can... peculiar number considering where he he ran uh, qualifying. So I mean, yeah. that's clearly an indication of what They're they think he's going to do, him. but also uh, uh, showing what he did earlier in the spring because he won the race earlier yeah. on this year. So I think that that number is down like that because of that. Yeah, I think they're afraid to uh, post too short of a number. Uh, Christopher Bell's number has floated a little bit, still around the same area. Chase Briscoe's number has one, seen one of the most significant uh, moves as it went from, you know, thirty to one to like twelve um, after qualifying really, really well. Uh, Logano's number has actually backed up a little bit, and I don't hate going back to him. Uh, Ross Chastain is the one that I don't understand. He qualified fine, not amazing. Um, you know what? 18 to one, it's going on the card. I, I just, it, he didn't do anything that like, if you didn't, if you liked him before, exactly. Why, why would you jump off now? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to take the 18 to one. And that's sometimes why you benefit from waiting on certain numbers. Cause there is potential that you get better numbers even if they don't qualify as poorly. You know, maybe they're not getting quite as much action on him, so they have to move his number, but thought that was interesting. And then old Brad K, 20 to 1, 15 to 1. I know it's not the 30 that we opened with, but it's compelling. It's hard to bet. Uh, thanks. Uh. God, it's hard asleep. to bet Kozlowski at anything under 25 or 30 yeah. on an hour rate. Like, I know he's looked great. He looked great in qualifying, but... No, yeah, no he's thing. a guy that we could live bet probably at a similar number, maybe a little bit shorter if we feel really yeah. good about what, how he's looked through the first stage. Exactly, yeah. First part of stage one. Um, Truex is backed out to 18-1. to 1. Dude, I don't think I want to double dip. That, <laughs> That seems aggressive. That's almost double of what you got it at, though. I know. That's why it's so tempting. <laughs> maybe I'll maybe I'll look at his top five, top ten numbers and see if there's any more value there. Uh, Almarola's number has shrunk pretty significantly. So Almarola, of the numbers that have shrank noticeably, Almarola, Keslowski, yeah. uh, Chase Briscoe. Briscoe, and Kyle Larson. If you had to bet one of them, which one would you bet? Oh man! I mean, obviously Larson feels the comfiest because he's gone from twelve to you know. Seven. Yeah, but you also have to invest a lot more. Like right. you're taking guys that coming into the week were not favored to win here. I would right. honestly, I would probably go. I'd probably go Almarola. I feel like he's he, he's the least likely to get caught up in a wreck mm-hmm. early and may be there late in order to make a move, an interesting pit stop that. Uh, finds himself in the front and potentially win. And it's the longest number of all of them. That's kind of the way that I think when I go to the betting window. Yeah, no, I think that's completely fair. I'd probably go with Brad K because he feels like the combination of longest odds combined with someone that I think can reasonably win. I obviously like Almirola. Yeah. Bet him on top 10, bet him on top five, but, um, and Brad K does not give an F. So no, but maybe he'll push someone out of the way, and Almirola yeah. can scoot right by and win the race, and uh, you can cash that ticket. So I just, I just, I do think it's interesting. Um, 
On the other hand, Kevin Harvick's numbers backed up, Martin Truex's numbers backed up, Kyle Busch's numbers backed up, and Tyler Reddick's number. You're walking to the window today. You have these four options. Who are you betting on? Is it a Marty party? No. I would probably go with with KV. I'd probably go Harvick. 20 to 1. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, he's so he's like steady Eddie. He yeah. uh, of those guys, to me, he would be the safest bet to be there late. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I, I like that call. I would go Truex just cuz I already bet him, but if yeah, I was exactly. if I didn't have that investment, you know, Harvick would be interesting for sure. Um Cole Custer is like randomly 30 to 1. I mean, I get it. He's I have cold, zero interest in that like, whatsoever. Yeah. It's funny. The the books just don't want to get beaten, and I get it. Yeah. Uh let's go top 10 numbers and see if there's any value popping up. Uh Truex is still minus money to top 10 despite qualifying poorly, which is a good sign for me. Um Yeah. Minus 200 for Keselowski. Um, we got some good numbers here. Tyler. Yeah, Reddick, Austin no. Dillon's up to plus 180 at DK. Yeah. Shit. Busher's up to three to one. I'm going, I'm going back. I'm adding another one for Busher. Do it. I got to add another unit. Uh, Almirola is still plus 140 at FanDuel. So if you like him, that's the place to get it. He's minus 110 or minus 105 everywhere else. So, um, Wow, yeah, that's so that's live that three to one. We, yeah, that's that's DK prices. DK is like the first book that always updates their odds. So, sure. yeah, they're 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 in there. He's... I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna go back to the to the well with Austin Dillon too. I I get an extra like third of a unit here on that That's yeah you got it at plus 150 now you're getting at a plus 180 that's a good that's a good value cole custer being plus 100 or minus 105 is pretty funny <laughs> that dude could crash in the first stage can I, I again going back to the markets like i almost wish they had markets like does this person finish the race or does yeah. this person finish on the lead lap? I would bet. I guess that's why we just do the head to heads and, and fade them. Cindric at yeah. three to one is kind of tempting to me just because McDowell at seven or eight and a half. Yeah. It's hard to get like, even the busher bet is a little bit risky because he's starting further back in the field. Like yeah. if he does not start strong, there's a good chance that if we stay green, for a long period of time, he finds himself a lap down and not the first car a lap down, and he doesn't regain that lap, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm going to add Chast- Chastain to top five as well um, at plus 250. That feels like a good number. Um, and I, if I have the outright on him, I would like to bake in a little bit of a sa- safety net in case... In case he gets Brad Keselowski or Denny wants to like remind him, um, you know what's going on or whatever. Any other top five numbers you want to look at, or should we jump over and look at head to heads? Still get. I think I'm gonna uh, still get plus three fifty on El Marola. I think I'm gonna do it. It's gross. This is the weekend where I. Uh, go against everything that I've talked about the entire year, but I'm going to add a Joey Logano top five at plus 150. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's, I think that it's if really you like Logano, I, I like betting him like top five or, or top three at plus 350. Um, I think that's a, I think that's a better way to attack it. I think you give yourself outs and he could, um, you know, he, he could be right in the conversation, not necessarily win the race. Yeah. All right, let's see what we got going on. Uh, Logano minus one over, 105 over Blaney is nice. Um, Again, I cannot root against Ryan Blaney uh, for Logano, so. Yeah. If you like Kozlowski over Redick, minus 105 still hanging out there, but... You can also get Reddick at minus 102, so pick your poison there. 
Um, Hamlin at plus uh, plus money over um, Chase Elliott is kind of nice. I mean, I guess yeah, I don't mind that at all. um, Byron over Hamlin at even Kyle Busch over Bogies. Uh, Ross Chastain at plus one sixty. What did I get him at? I think you got it at the same. I got it at one sixty. So yeah, I don't think it moved much. Yeah, it's in- it's same interesting to see what markets move and what's one. I guess it just depends on where the money comes in if they feel like they need to adjust it. Plus one fifty five. Christopher Bell is kind of fun. Um, True Truex is a minus one thirty favorite to Kyle Larson, despite Larson looking amazing. Is should we just be firing on this? I'm gonna add it because that seems. Very peculiar. Maybe, and maybe that's why. I don't know. I mean, this could be fooled gold, to... but yeah, they're 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 setting up the bear trap, and we're walking right into it. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you're giving me plus money on a guy that, and it's a good way to hedge my outrights, right? Like I have my outright. If he doesn't win, then I'm probably gonna cash my. Uh, Cash my head to head, so that's interesting. Busher over Bubba is interesting. Um, Dinger being plus only plus a hundred. Briscoe minus one twenty. That's kind of interesting. Uh, I think it is interesting. I think the books they don't mind like if someone qualifies well, if they still feel like the other guy is a better option yeah. or it's close enough. Um, they can, they, they don't move that juice too much. Okay, Brian, uh, last but not least, let's look at our old friend constructor slash manufacturer and see if there's any interesting Chastain A to one to be top Chevy is interesting. I do like that a lot. Um, okay. This is, it's no, I can't do it. Do it. <laughs> do it. I was gonna say L- Logano at four fifty. Considering the the fact that he is not ahead of Chase Briscoe here is kind of gross. Yeah, yeah. Just do it. Blaney's gonna have an issue in the pits. Briscoe, you know I'll do it. You don't have the cojones. <laughs> I will do it for you. I can't. I can't consciously root for that though. Like I. Because, again, that would be rooting for him to finish ahead of Ryan Blaney, and I do not You know what that, that means? That means it's going to cash, and I'm going to cash that shit. Uh, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, Truex at plus 450. Kyle Busch at plus 650. To be top Toyota is kind of nice. I'm going to check out the group winners to see if there's anything... Yeah, they've gotten a, they've gotten a lot shorter with these. Did we find? Oh, they don't have a a total of cautions. Yeah, they don't. Um, they don't want to get had. No. No, we were able to like double up on a couple groups and still make money. No, not so much. Yeah. Um, this is interesting. I feel like Harvick at four to one or Kyle Busch at four four and a half to one is a pretty nice number. Like, I, I don't think Larson is, obviously he looked amazing and could easily smash all these guys. But if he has an incident, ends up not finishing the race, literally all of these guys are in play. And I'm going roll at plus 220 over Keselowski, Wallace, and Dylan. I like that quite a bit as well. Okay, recap the card, give people another best bet, and let's get out of here. So, Brian, we'll start with your lineup or with your your um, your odds. Give me your give me your card, and then give me your best bet from Wednesday, and then your best bet as we sit here today on Saturday afternoon. All right. So for the Xfinity 500, my betting card consists of Chase Elliott and Ryan Blaney, which I got pre practice and qualifying at plus 850. Uh, the top tens, I added a couple today, but, 
Uh, I'm going with Brad Keselowski plus 105. Busher, the top 10, was my best bet earlier in the week at plus 140. I had Alma Rolla at plus 140 and Austin Dillon at plus 150. Today I went back to Busher to top 10 at 3-1 to one and Austin Dillon at a better number at plus 180. For my matchups, I got A.J. Allmendinger over Chase Briscoe for three units. Christopher Bell over Blaney just because of the number of plus 155. Busher over Bubba at minus 105. And then I added Kyle Larson over Martin Truex at plus 110, which seems ridiculous. And then I added a Joey Logano top five. My best bet after looking back over all of the data, uh, practice, qualifying, just how strongly I feel about this driver, regardless of qualifying, is going to be Chris Buescher over Bubba Wallace um, at minus 105. Bubba's best finish at Martinsville Speedway is 11th, and that was back in 2020. And then he's got a couple of 16s, a 25th, and a 21st over his last four trips here. And you already heard me say Chris Buescher's ran 15th or better in four of his last five trips at this track. I think Buescher crushes Bubba, still gets that top 10, and I'm sitting pretty as we head to championship four. Yeah. Um, I like a lot of what you uh, you mentioned. Uh, so Truex is still my and Ross Chastain are my two outrights. I think I'm going to be good there. There is room for one more, but we'll see. Uh, Austin Dillon top 10. Eric Almarola top 10 was my best bet from Wednesday. Feeling really good about that. Kozlowski top five. Almarola top five. Kozlowski over Reddick. Chastain over Elliott. Christopher Bell over Ryan Blaney. Um, added the Chris Busher top 10 at three to one just because. Um, as we sit here today, it's a much, much better number. Ross Chastain to top five at plus 250. Larson over Truex just because of that number. It's really compelling. And then Logano top forward at plus 450. Um, I'm going to go with Chastain to top five. I think he has a strong race here. Obviously, I still like him as I added him to the outright card at 18 to one. At plus 250, I feel like that's a really good number. And as I look to come back, I'm going to throw three units on there, Ooh. and let's see what we can get done. Uh, the one thing I do want to check, Brian, let's see if we can actually get... Um, they don't have championship futures up yet. I was hoping that we could see that, but uh, as we mentioned, Bell makes sense. Uh, Blaney could make sense. And also, too, like Briscoe coming back with his odds to win the race tomorrow. Like, if you think that he's going to win the race, like, you need to go back to the market and hit him yeah. to win the championship because there's literally only one race left after this. Yeah. Yeah. The only person that is guaranteed a spot next week in the final four is Joey Logano. What a wild sentence. That's Brian Twining. I'm Kyle Robert. Enjoy your Sunday. Enjoy the race. We will be back next week to get you set for the championship race. We're going to Phoenix. Uh, Final four will be locked in. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about the odds. We'll talk about the race odds. Um, and then get you set for the final race of the NASCAR season. If you're still with us, if you're still watching, make sure you the thumbs up has been smashed. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel. And let us know down in the comments your favorite bet for the top 10 as it sits today. Um, or, you know, as you're watching it on Sunday morning. So that is Brian Twining. I'm Kyle Robert. We'll talk to you guys next time.